We've got Quinnipiac and RIT at 4 o'clock on Saturday. We've got Yale and UMass Lowell at 7.30. The man calling the action for ESPN is Kevin Brown. He is with us here. Kevin, what are you looking forward to in this weekend's game? I, first of all, I'm looking forward to seeing Gaz again. <laughs> Thank you, What's Kevin. What's up, Gazi Bear? Former colleagues. Yes. It's good to be back here he needs out a the haircut. 518. Oh, we talked Gaz about that earlier. multiple haircuts. I, I also like to say, no show has ever needed me more than you guys need me now. The, how much Sebastian the Ibis talk can one man take? I, I, I will say this. I knew what the Ibis was as really? a mascot. I didn't know he was that courageous. Yes. I'm, See, I'm we're bringing the now. people the I'm info. I'm a big Ibis fan. Um, I don't remember what your question was, Brady. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to say hi to Gaz on the yeah, so what thank you, Kevin. I appreciate it. What are you expecting on the NCAA East uh, East Regional this weekend? I think this is an awesome reach, and I hope folks show up because, number one, you have four pretty local teams within you know, three and a half, four hours or so, which is not bad at all, considering earlier today we had Northeastern playing against North Dakota up in St. Paul. That's oh. not great. But all these teams are relatively close. This is going to be a great region. If you like good goalie play, it is a superb, superb region. Yale versus UMass Lowell tomorrow. Yale is the top team in the nation in scoring defense. Lowell is number two in the nation in scoring defense. Alex Lyon for Yale, maybe the best goalie in the country. Kevin Boyle for Lowell, you could make that argument too. Quinnipiac's goalie is a, a senior named Michael Gartig who's fourth in the history of the NCAA in shutouts. And he's the third best goalie in the region by far. Wow. So there's just great, great goalie play. And as you guys know, and as any hockey fan knows, this time of year, you get the hot goalie. Anything can happen. That happened to Yale three years ago. Yale was one of the last teams into the tournament and swept through, won the whole thing on the heels of some terrific goalie play. Right Could here, happen again. Right here in the Capital Region, we always hear the talk of the NHL playoffs being the best playoffs of any sport because of the hot goalie. You touch on it. Yep. What can happen in the playoffs? You look at college hockey, can we expect that same type of excitement and atmosphere right here in the Capital Region involving college hockey playoffs? I think so. I mean, we've had some exciting games in the past here. RIT is the interesting team in the bunch because RIT was the last team into the field at the number 16 seed. They're the only last team in because they won their conference tournament. Um, RIT, for folks that don't know, they're in the Atlantic Hockey. Think of that as basically the MAC or maybe even like the Sun Belt. Uh, yeah. One of those one bid conferences. Fun belt. As you, we, Hashtag we, we, fun belt. That's right. That's like right. we call it the fun belt. I, I don't like the inside jokes. <laughs> I want to be included. No, that's just that's what the conference does. It's a hashtag fun belt. Turn on ESPN seven on Tuesday night. You see Louisiana Lafayette. Um, RIT was the 16th seed last year, and they beat number one Minnesota State. That had never happened since 2003 in the 16 team format. The 16 had never beaten the one. It's pretty much the same team now, about the same core for RIT that can do that. Their goalie is a young man named Mike Rotolo, who's about 240 pounds. We talked to today. He's a big kid for a goalie. Most goalies are not that big. And he just came back two weekends ago from an ankle injury. He was out for about two months. So they're getting the right goalie now at the right time. It's really a matter of, you know, Quinnipiac is the number one overall seed. We can get them. They're by far the best team overall in this region. That may not matter because when you're the hot team, you're the hot team, and especially in hockey. One wrong bounce, one outside of a post. It's such uh, it's such a sort of coin flip in terms of these games. Single, even more so than the basketball tournament. Single elimination, and one thing can go wrong in a moment. Let's Kevin, talk, go ahead. Kevin Brown with us. He's calling the uh, NCAA Hockey East Regional. I said Elite Eight. It's really like the Sweet 16 yeah. uh, here at the Times Union Center this weekend. We've got Quinnipiac and RIT, 4 o'clock Yale and UMass Lowell at 7.30 on Saturday. I know I'll be out there tomorrow as well. We're sitting down at Wolves 111 Colony. Great food, great beer, great wait staff. Kevin, how – you said Quinnipiac's the best team. Yes. What are the NF NHL prospects like, though, that we're going to be seeing this uh, at this region? I mean, how good are these prospects? Are there any huge names we should know? I remember looking at Johnny Gaudreau two years ago yeah. in the playoffs. The funny thing is the best NHL players in this region might not have been drafted yet. Quinnipiac is an interesting case. I'll lay it out. They only have two NHL draft picks. There's a young man named Devontae's who's been drafted by the Islanders. He's probably their best draft pick. He's a defenseman. But Quinnipiac is the only team in the field right now that does not have an alum currently playing in the NHL. Wow. And then wow. the number one seed, because they were a program that 18 years ago didn't exist. They were D3, 
their coach was literally not a full-time employee, Rand Pecknold, when he joined on at Quinnipiac. He was teaching during the day, waking up at 6 to go teach, sleeping from 3 p.m. to 6 p.m., practicing at midnight with his D3 team, sleeping from 3 a.m. to 6 a.m. So they built up from really nothing, and they're not at the level yet where they're getting a lot of sizable kids. They've got some terrific kids. They have a, uh, a player named Sam Annis, who's one of the leading scorers in all of college hockey, but he's maybe 5'8", five, 5'9". Five, they have a player named Travis St. Dennis, their second leading scorer again. 5'9", five, 5'10", five, not recruited by these top-level schools. Usually you think B.C., B.U., a, a Jack Eichel last year, obviously, yeah. what a terrific player he is. Michigan has a freshman named Kyle Connor who's fabulous. There are some established programs that get these 18-, 19-year-old kids. What you're going to see tomorrow is more the 22, 23, 24-year-olds, the kids that played junior hockey for two, three years, that are advanced, that aren't in the NHL because they're a little bit smaller, because they're a little bit older, but once the season ends they can probably contribute right away. So it's a different game in that respect. There's nobody here that's a first-round pick or even a second-round pick. They they might not uh, necessarily grab the headlines. That just means they're guys that are a little bit of a different style. Maybe some late bloomers are guys that, because of their age, have been undrafted, have had that status tag to them, and can contribute next week if their season ends. Brady and I talked a little bit yesterday about the Oregon-Duke matchup and how the Blue Devils just lack depth. I look at Quinnipiac, and they have nine guys who have at least 20 points a season. Is that really the strength of the Bobcats? 100%. We talked to Quinnipiac earlier today. We talked to six players and the coach. If we had a nickel every time the word depth was used, I'd get another <laughs> bucket of beers here. And they're, they're all about it. They've got four great lines, four great forward lines, three great defensive lines. There are kids on Quinnipiac that, frankly, might crack one of the top two or three lines in RIT or Lowell or or Yale that just don't play, that are just scratches. They they make up for that lack of high-end NHL talent, at least on paper, um, by that depth. Our, their coach, Rand Pecknold, said to us, we don't dominate anyone. You look up and down their schedule, they don't have a lot of wins where they dominated wire to wire. They just wear teams down. They take total control of the third. Nobody scores on them after the second period, it seems like. So they wear you down. They run out four lines. They balance it. Some teams... Yeah, they have four lines. Two of them play a lot. The third one plays a little, and the fourth gets a shift here and there. They're not like that. So they are the anti-Duke in that respect. There's no Brandon Ingram on Quinnipiac, maybe. There's no Grayson Allen. Um, but Chase Jeter wouldn't be playing on Quinnipiac. <laughs> 1045 the team, 1045 the team.com. ESPN broadcaster Kevin Brown sitting down with us at Wolves 111, breaking down the NCAA Hockey East Regional, which is this week at the Times Union Center. Kevin, so you guys come in, ESPN comes into the Times Union Center. What's it like behind the scenes? How much work does it go into? Like, we're, It takes a lot of work for us to broadcast remotely here at Wolves 111. Right. What does it take for you guys to broadcast uh, at the Times Union Center? Well, I've been here since Tuesday just wrapping coils around the arena. <laughs> yeah. no. um, it's, a big, it's a big deal. And, and for me, this is probably the biggest production um, I've been a part of. I got there this morning and... I would say I drove from Syracuse, got in around 940. Another Q's guy. That's Another all God gets us. <laughs> That's it. Big one tonight. That's right. Um, I got in about 940 this morning. The truck's already set up. It's a big production truck. There are people scrambling around, but a dozen people there in the morning. Everything's set up. The booth set up. There's all this food spread out. We sat down today. We had four hours worth of production meetings with each team, coaches, and players. Um, it is a massive ordeal. You walk inside the production truck. I, I walked in at 3.30 today when I was supposed to be on my way here, but sorry about that, everybody. Um, there were nine people in there working on things. Games don't start from the 25 hours. I really admire what ESPN does. This is my first time with these hockey games, the, the resources they dedicate to this NCAA tournament, and they make it into a big event. You know, It gets lost. I get it. I'm a basketball fan. This is the main event, the basketball tournament. But ESPN, with ESPN U and two and news covering these games, and ESPN cover the championship, really put a lot of resources into this. Um, it's a big deal. I think the Hilton Garden Inn is getting some good business. Yeah. <laughs> the new Scotland Hilton Garden Inn. Shout out! Thanks for the new carpet on the floor. Uh, it's good. It's it's really a, it's a fun environment to be in because I have a packet with me right now, which really makes for great radio. I'm holding it up. You can't see. That's how it really works. There are about 30 pages in here of graphics of set up of promos uh it's it's intense this is not some you know 
half-done job, basically. Yeah, and, and not to put more pressure on you, but I will Please here. Please do. Um, no, go for it. Yesterday, Brady and I talked about some of our favorite broadcasters of all time. And, and you, I was number one. Uh, Thank you. I somehow, Kevin did not make the list, did he, Brady? Brady sips on the beer, so that's definitely a no. Uh <laughs> Hockey. I would I would take the beer over me. <laughs> <laughs> Hockey play by play. When young broadcasters working their way up, whether they're U Albany, St. Rose, the new school, is hockey the toughest sport to do play by play of? I think so. Oh, I disagree. I want to hear Kevin's answer, okay. but I disagree. So I, it's actually but for me it's it's toughest I would say hockey is the one that takes the most pregame prep in terms of memorizing numbers. In terms of getting the lines in your mind, because when you see 15 skate on the ice, you got to know that 42, 36, or 15's left right wing and right wing. Um, it moves the quickest. You have to identify players. Missing a goal can be hard because there are four guys in front of the net. The other one for me, and I've done hockey, baseball, basketball, football, soccer, wrestling, everything basically besides bobsled. And if there's anybody out here that does bobsled tv i'm in <laughs> i've watched cool runnings enough times so i think i can do it um baseball is tough because baseball sometimes is eight nothing in the third inning and it's the 26th consecutive day that you've played and you haven't had a day off and you got into syracuse at 5 30 in the morning because you bust back overnight from durham north carolina and you thought there was going to be a rain out so you sat in your booth for an hour and a half, and then the rain let up at 6.30. Uh, this is very, again, not that this has ever happened to me. <laughs> I, I um, bet. I'm sure, right? Baseball can move really slowly, and that can be tough. Hockey can move really quickly, and that can be tough. I, I admire the challenge, uh, but I'm curious to hear what you have to say. I think football is the toughest. Uh, I was doing D3 football. So, look, when you get up to the, to the NFL, it's different. you got spotters and things like that. But you talk about the hurry-up offense. By the time I identified who made the tackle, we're already at, we're already snapping the ball for the next play. So yeah, the hurry up is not a broadcaster's yeah, best friend. So. The nice thing about football is at least if there's not a hurry up, you can get into a rhythm. Play, okay, thirty seconds, analyze. Yeah, play it. Hockey. When you're a hockey analyst, the guy I'm working with tomorrow is uh, Billy Jaffe, who's tremendous. Works for Nesson's, done Bruins, Islanders. When do you pick your spots? When do you analyze? Because if you start saying something, two seconds later the puck could be turned over to me. So we'll see. Maybe we'll be horrendous. Ultimate uh, probably fri- not, but... What about Ultimate Frisbee? I would when you're, love to do Ultimate Frisbee. My cousin's a former Chiefs guy. Do Ultimate yeah, Frisbee? Yeah, my cousin's at the Ultimate like American Championships. Oregon is good at Ultimate Frisbee. That's all I know about <laughs> Ultimate Frisbee. 104.5, the team, 104.5, the team.com. Brady and Gaz in for the back today. We're live at Wolves 111. We're sitting down with Kevin Brown broadcasting the hockey regional at the Times Union Center this weekend for ESPN, but also the broadcaster for the Syracuse Chiefs, which is the AAA affiliate of the Washington Nationals. What kind of guy is Bryce Harper? What's he like? Well, we had Bryce. Is he as cocky as he seems? Bryce, is. I, I'd say he's confident. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll say this. We had Bryce in 2012 for one month, so I don't want to paint a complete psychological picture of Bryce Harper. But from what I gathered of Bryce, the thing that stuck out to me, and again, this is April 2012, the thing that stuck out to me about Bryce, his teammates really respected him and went to bat. I know that early on in his major league career, people would say, well, Bryce acts like a brash guy. He had that sort of, you know, punk was a word carried on to him. I don't know if that's fair. I understand that not everything Bryce has done in his professional career is what, you know, Goose Gossage would like to see. <laughs> yeah, what would you make but, of Harper's comments that the game is tired and stale? I agree with him, honestly. I, I Here's where baseball's at to me, and again, one man's opinion. 